Have you ever wanted to model a jar really, really fast? Or perhaps you wanted to create a quick vase that holds dead flowers. Or maybe you just want to create something a little bit more complicated. Or perhaps something complicated but made out of glass. Or maybe just something as simple as a wine glass and a plate. Or maybe even a plate holding a wine glass. If that is the case, this tutorial is for you. Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we are going to go over NURBS modeling, N-U-R-B-S. NURBS is a powerful modeling tool in Maya, and I want to show you how you can quickly create these items in four easy steps. If you are new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So... Bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started in quickly modeling objects using NURBS. All right, here we are in Maya. And the way NURBS modeling works is that you need to first create a curve, then we're going to revolve it, we're gonna convert it into geometry, and then done. It's really that simple. <laughs> so let's get started with the basics. All right, we're gonna start off with the wine glass. So I always encourage people to go into the front or side view, and then we are going to grab our curves. So create curves, EP curve tool, and let's create a wine glass. I don't have an outline, so I'm kind of eyeballing it. So I'm just gonna go in and just kinda, you know, you just click and drag and create your little shape. And you really just need the basic silhouette of the wine glass. So you're just gonna click it around until you end around here. So something like this, press enter. Now this isn't set in stone. We're gonna right click, go to control vertices and just kind of manipulate these so that, you know, you get the wine glass that you want. So maybe this a little thinner and maybe this a little higher and maybe this part can be a little flatter, something like that. Now the tool that we're gonna be using is called Revolve. So you can find it under Curve Surfaces and you're gonna find it right here, but it's all based on this pivot point. So we're gonna click on the letter D on your keyboard and move that pivot point to the beginning or end of your curve. Click D again, and now we're gonna click on Revolve. But the magic actually happens in perspective. So just like, it's, like it says, you're gonna click this and you get Revolve and now I have a wine glass. So let me select it and move it aside. Now this isn't set in stone and you'll also notice that it's black. And the reason why it's black is because the surface is going the opposite direction. So to quickly fix that, we can go to surfaces up here under modeling pull down menu, go to surfaces and just go all the way to the bottom, which is reverse direction. And there you go. The nice, simple Lambert shading. Now, as I mentioned, this isn't set in stone, so I can actually go into my control vertices and kind of bring this in a little bit and still manipulate it. So if I want to, I can actually create all sorts of different shapes and fairly quickly too. So let me kind of bring this in a little bit and we're gonna convert this. We're gonna go to modify, convert, nerves to polygon options, and we're gonna make sure that control points is selected. So edit, reset settings, control points, tessellate, and we're gonna get a not so pretty looking cup. If I press the number three on my keyboard door, though, you'll notice that it looks exactly like, like my NURB surfaces. Now NURBS, if you right click on the NURBS, you're gonna see that we have isoparm, control vertices, surface points, and it's actually very challenging to control. It acts like a model. So you can manipulate the faces, the vertices, you can UV map it and so on and so forth. This one, not so much. It's a little bit more challenging. And you can also see that they are still being influenced by each other, including the curve. So if I do this, they all change. Now to make this look prettier, let's go to Mesh Smooth just to make it permanent. There you go, so now that looks a lot better. So when I press the number one on my keyboard, it actually looks like it's supposed to look like versus when it was low poly. Now how do we tell it to not be connected to this curve? Well, just delete the history. So let's go to Poly Modeling. I'm gonna center the pivot, delete the history, freeze the transformations, and now this object is done. Now what's powerful about this is that I can continue going on and creating a lot more glasses. So for example, if I wanted to make this a little wider and make it feel more like a, kind of like a goblet, something like that, again, I can go to modify, convert, NURBS to polygons, push this aside, mesh smooth, 
and then hit all three buttons and continue going from there. So again, it's pretty fun because you can quickly create a bunch of different types of glasses or goblets or basically anything uh, fairly quickly just using the curves. So again, one more time, we're going to go to Modify, Convert, Nerves to Polygons. Again, the options is Control Points, Tessellate, move that aside, hit those three buttons, Mesh Smooth, and now I have a variety of cups. And I can go from there. All right, cool. Next, we are going to create a plate. So very similar. We're going to go to create curves, EP curve tools, and just, just like the silhouette, you're just going to go ahead and kind of click your little points and end here, press enter, right click, control vertex, and let's go ahead and crush these. I'm scaling them flat so they look a little better and let's see what we get. So one more time, go to object mode. Again, it's all about where that pivot point is. So there's my pivot point here, click D, and then I'm just going to make sure these are actually flat. And once again, we're going to select this curve, go to curves and surfaces tab, or you can go to surfaces here and just do revolve. So it gives you the same thing. It is going the wrong direction. So surfaces reverse direction. And now I have a plate. Again, really fast. You could model this really quickly too in polygons, but you know, this is also really fast. So convert nerves to polygons, going to bring it over here. Click these three buttons, mesh, smooth, and now I have a plate. Again, you're not limited to just this. You can always go back and, you know, make your, make a bowl if you like. So deselect that. I can give myself a platter here. Make this a little thicker. There you go, a simple bowl. Or actually, let me just make this into a bowl. Whee. There we go. So once again, you can go to Modify, Convert, Nerves of Polygon Options, Mesh Smooth, and then hit these three buttons. Cool. There you go long have I been recording? It doesn't take very long. It's amazing. <laughs> Super powerful. Okay, let's go ahead and create something a little bit more exotic, something like this, right? All right, so under create free image plane, I brought in this image and I'm going to use it as my reference. So once again, we're just going to outline this. We're going to go to create curves, EP curve tools. And again, you just have to do kind of like half of it. So I'm just going to go in and just follow the silhouette. It's not going to be perfect. Uh, you guys can be as picky as you like. And the sharper the corner, the more points you want. And again, I'm just following half of the object. And I may need more points along here just to kind of get that nice little dot at the top. Press enter when you're done. And of course you can right click control vertices and make your changes. So you might want to zoom in and just kind of uh, make sure that it's the shape that you want it to be. If you want to get rid of a vertice, just press delete on your keyboard. And that will get rid of a vertice. Adding one is way more complicated. So make sure you give yourself plenty of dots. Plenty of vertices to play with. All right, it looks pretty good. All right, object mode. You wanna make sure that pivot point is at the beginning or the end of the curve. And then hit D again, and we're gonna go ahead and revolve. Surfaces, revolve. There it is. Cool. Just like that. Now, if you wanted the lid to be separate, obviously you would have to have two separate curves or you can just extract the mesh. But let me flatten this out a little bit because the, the bottom looks really curved. And part of it's because of the picture. Um, but let me go ahead and flatten this out a little bit. And there we go, just like that. Let's go ahead and convert nerves to polygons option. Um, nerves to polygons. Let's go to mesh smooth. 
and delete the history, freeze the transformations, all that jazz, and there we go. Um, it is high poly, so if that is a problem, then I definitely recommend that you consider remeshing. So you can try going to mesh, retopologize options, and then you can reduce it. So for example, maybe I just want it to be a thousand. Um, if you want to keep your hard edges, make sure that's on and apply. And if you like the look of that, then go ahead and delete the history and all that stuff too. So it definitely reduces it. And it also does some weird geometry, so keep that in mind. So that's one method of retopologizing. Another one could be that you just clean it up yourself. So let me undo what I just did. There we go. And then you just clean it. So you just kind of go in and get rid of the edges that you don't want. So just grab edges and then do a control delete, which basically gets rid of edges, control delete and things like that. So that will help with uh, reducing the topology count if that's important to you. For some, it's not very important. Let me zoom in here and get a better look. Control delete, there is a hole at the top, so you can go ahead and either close it or you can do fill hole. We can go to mesh, fill hole. Or if you're worried about that end gone, you can bridge. So you can grab this edge, this edge, and click on bridge right here. Click G. you may get a triangle. And for this one, you can do fill hole. Cool. So again, it's up to you. Grab these edges, scale it. To be fair, not many people look at the bottom, so you might wanna just re get rid of all these edges. That also helps lower your topology. Again, it's really up to you and the needs of your project. All right, so since we're done with that, let's go ahead and delete it. And fairly quickly, you can see that by creating these NURB surfaces, you can actually get some really nice polygons. So now these are ready to be UV mapped, textured, rendered, and so on and so forth. So for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a glass shader. So there's a preset over here. Let's go to uh, let's go to clear water. I'm gonna make this into clay. So assign a new material, Arnold AI standard surface presets. Let's go to clay, and then it looks like they disappeared. But if I go to wireframe or wireframe on shaded, you will see that they're they're definitely still there. It's just that they're transparent. And for this one, um, let's go ahead and add another Arnold AI standard surface, and I'm gonna make this into Jade. All right, let's create a circle here, or a disc, oh, there it is. Make sure everything is on the ground. Might want to turn on occlusion here just to make sure everything's basically on the floor or you can tell by if it's intersecting the ground. Hit D, I'm gonna move the pivot point down and just kind of scale this up a little bit. Arnold lights, physical sky, and let's take a render. All right, I'm gonna press escape, turn on my resolution gate and get a better angle. Grab my light, I'm gonna turn, scroll down to camera, change it to zero. That's gonna make my black, my background black. And I'm actually going to make this look even better by actually using a sky dome, scrolling up to the top, go to color, and then grab an HDRI file. So go to file, folder, and let me go find an HDRI. All right, let's grab that. Again, scroll down. Oop. Go back to the light, scroll down, change this visibility to zero, and let's take a render. Much more realistic. You can always turn the camera back on if you need, if you feel like you need a background. I'll be right back as it renders. And there you go. I press the number three on the 
on the objects. It looks smoother that way. And as you can see, very quickly, I can create a lot of objects in no time at all. It's just a few steps. Create the curve, then revolve it, then convert it, and then and then that's it. <laughs> There's like three steps. Super easy, super fun. You can do a lot with them. If you need to fill an environment quickly with jars, you can do that with all different types of jars. And if you needed to create plates and cups and dishes and anything that you need, NURBS is the way to go. So check it out. It's super fun. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. And um, just for fun, since I have this here, and I feel like pushing this a little further. Let's grab our objects. Do, 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 do. And we are going to go and activate a rigid body. And this is going to be my passive body. And we're going to rewind and play and just watch them boom, blip. Let me rewind. Let me pull back here. So we can just kind of watch it go bow. There it goes. Bye. Okay, let's see what happens here. Boom. <laughs> I'm not sure why the blades are doing that, but welcome to bullets. Wee. It's kind of fun. Maybe I'll rent that. Let's see what that looks like. There you go. What do you think? <laughs> it was a nice and calm little picnic outside. And then suddenly a gust of wind comes in and just throws everything off into the air. But very quickly and with simple shaders, you can create a really kind of relatively realistic uh, items, renders and everything. So hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. You can also like and subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like this content and that you want to see more. Take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free ebooks, downloads, resources, and so much more. So academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find e-courses. Those are e-courses that are deep dives of the software Maya, including modeling, UV mapping, texturing, lighting, and rendering. So the whole gamut. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com e-courses. That's another fantastic way to support me. So again, thank you so much for taking the time with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Keep creating and I will see you next time.